groups on Mount Shasta, one involving two Sacramento climbers. The Siskiyou County Sheriff's Office says that the local man and woman are among six people airlifted off the mountain in four separate incidents in just 24 hours. See you. about earthquakes and wildfires. But this morning, it's another natural threat making headlines. California is not just earthquake country. It's also volcano country. What if the ground beneath one of California's most iconic mountains is whispering a warning? What if Mount Shasta this towering, snow-capped giant, quietly looming at 14,179 feet, is not as silent as it seems. For centuries, it's inspired awe, reverence, and myth. But now, scientists are paying closer attention, because the earth beneath Mount Shasta has started to stir. In recent weeks, tremors have rippled through the foothills of far northern California. Small, sharp, and unsettling, these quakes have disrupted the quiet of the Cascade Range and reignited a long-standing question. What's really happening beneath Mount Shasta? It's not just one quake. It's a swarm, dozens of tremors, clustered together, seemingly insignificant on their own, but ominous when viewed as a pattern. And this isn't isolated. Ah, and three of California's volcanoes are named among the most at risk in the country for a catastrophic eruption. CBS's Maria Medina has more on what it really means to be on that danger list. Mount Rainier to the north is experiencing its most intense swarm in over 15 years. Quakes near Redding, strange activity along the Broly seismic zone. It all hints at something deeper. So is Mount Shasta waking up? Or are we just witnessing tectonic growing pains? To understand that, we need to go underground deep beneath the crust of the Earth into the engine room of the Pacific Northwest. Mount Shasta is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a line of volcanic peaks forged by one of the most powerful tectonic interactions on the planet, the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath the North American plate. Offshore, this oceanic plate is diving under the continent in slow motion, dragging water and minerals into the mantle. That triggers the melting of rock. The result? Magma, heat, pressure, volcanoes, and occasionally, earthquakes. Now, not every earthquake means magma is rising. But when they cluster, when swarms emerge, scientists take notice. Especially when those swarms appear beneath or near a volcano. Why? Because swarms can mean many things. Shifting magma, fluid movement, or tectonic stress changes. Some swarms are harmless. Others are precursors. And the truth is, we don't always know which is which. Mount Shasta has erupted in the past and will again. The last major eruption? Around 1,786. Before that, a long and violent history of lava flows, pyroclastic surges, and ash clouds. The mountain is classified as potentially active, and scientists monitor it closely. But the recent uptick in seismic activity raises fresh questions. Are we witnessing a magma recharge event? Is this the result of regional stress being redistributed after distant quakes? Or is the mountain itself stretching, adjusting, preparing? And here's where it gets more complex. Earthquake swarms aren't just happening at Shasta. Mount Rainier, Mount Spur in Alaska, even the Salton Buttes in Southern California, these volcanic zones are all showing signs of low-level agitation. It's as if the entire western edge of the continent is humming. So what do we make of this? Is it all connected? Some scientists believe it might be. Cascadia, the massive subduction zone that runs from Northern California to British Columbia, is capable of producing magnitude 9.0 earthquakes. When that fault finally slips, the Pacific Northwest will change overnight. Land could sink, shorelines could shift, and tsunamis could follow. Mount Shasta isn't on the fault itself, but it sits near the southern end of that unstable margin. That makes it part of a tectonic system where changes in one area can affect stress in another. A large quake up north could shift pressures across hundreds of miles. And if volcanic systems are already near a tipping point, that could be enough to push them. Still, we're not predicting an eruption. 
We're not calling for disaster. What we are seeing is movement, measurable, repeatable, increasing movement. And that means it's time to listen. On the ground, people are paying attention. Residents in towns like Weed, Dunsmuir, and Reading have felt some of the recent tremors. For many, they're a reminder that beauty and danger can exist side by side. Mount Shasta is sacred to indigenous nations. The Shasta, Wintu, Karuk, and others have honored it for millennia. They've told stories of its power, its presence, and its ability to speak. These new quakes, for some, feel like a voice returning. Emergency planners are on alert. Scientists are reviewing decades of data, cross-referencing patterns from previous swarms, checking for signs of magma movement. GPS stations, seismographs, and satellite imaging are now the eyes and ears watching this restless mountain. And the verdict? So far, no major changes. But the monitoring will continue because the pattern is evolving. One tremor can be brushed off. Ten can be explained. A swarm? That demands attention. And here's why it matters. The last time Mount Shasta erupted, there were no seismographs, no alerts, no models. If it erupted today, even a small event could disrupt air travel, damage infrastructure, and send ash across the region. A larger eruption, unlikely but not impossible, would reshape parts of California's north entirely. Lahars or volcanic mudflows could rush down valleys in minutes. Streams would change course. Roads could be cut off. That's not fear, it's geology. Preparedness isn't about panic. It's about respect. Respecting the land, the science, and the long memory of a place like Mount Shasta. Earthquake swarms are part of that memory. They are the way the mountain breathes, shifts, and adjusts. So what should we do now? Keep watching. Keep listening. Share what you learn. Make a plan. Prepare a go-bag. Talk to your neighbors. Support science. Because when the earth starts whispering, the worst thing we can do is ignore it. This isn't just a Mount Shasta story. It's a California story. A Cascadia story. A story of how the ground beneath us is never truly still. And how learning from each tremor may one day save lives. Are you feeling the shift? What questions do you have about earthquake swarms, volcanic unrest, or the mysterious power beneath our mountains? Drop them in the comments. We want to hear your stories, your fears, your curiosity. And if you want to stay updated on this evolving situation, on the science, the signals, and the seismic truths that shape our world, subscribe now. Hit that bell so you don't miss a beat or a quake. Because in the shadow of Mount Shasta, even the smallest rumble can echo through history. What if I told you that beneath the breathtaking waves of the Pacific, just off the Oregon coast, lies a force so powerful it could erase entire towns in minutes. A monster that's awakened before and will awaken again. And the scariest part? We now know it's even more dangerous than we thought. Welcome to the Cascadia Subduction Zone, a geological boundary so massive it stretches 700 miles from Northern California to British Columbia. Here, the Juan de Fuca Plate, an oceanic plate, is diving silently beneath the North American Plate. It's been happening for millions of years, but it's far from peaceful. This slow-motion collision builds tension, energy, and pressure until it doesn't. Until it snaps. But recent discoveries have changed the game. Scientists, armed with subseafloor mapping, sonar imaging, deep ocean sensors, and autonomous underwater vehicles, are revealing something disturbing. Cascadia isn't just one big fault. It's a web a chaotic, intricate network of fractures. Cross-cutting fault lines, hidden weaknesses, and seismic hotspots just waiting to erupt. And here's what's truly wild. These secondary fractures can act like wild cards. They might block a major rupture or trigger one. They could make the next quake bigger, faster, and far more unpredictable. So, what does that mean for the millions of people living in the Pacific Northwest? Let's break it down. Every few hundred years, Cascadia releases its pent-up rage in what's called a megathrust earthquake. We're talking magnitude 9.0 or more. The last one, January 26, 1700. Indigenous oral histories recall the ground shaking so violently that forests collapsed, rivers reversed, and entire coastal villages disappeared. 
Japanese records from the same night show a mysterious tsunami hitting their shores. No quake in Japan. Just a massive wave. It took centuries to connect the dots. That wave came from Oregon. Now picture this. Modern cities like Portland, Eugene, and Salem sitting on top of this ticking fault. Highways, airports, hospitals, all of it perched on the edge of catastrophe. And while that might sound dramatic, it's not fear-mongering. It's geology. New suboceanic maps reveal zones of weakness we never knew existed. Oblique faults cutting across the main subduction line form a web of stress concentrators. Some of them, scientists now believe, are already quietly active. Not with shaking you can feel, but with micro-earthquakes. Hundreds. Thousands. Like the soft ticking of a clock before the alarm bell rings. And then there's Axial Seamount. This undersea volcano sits about 300 miles off the coast. It erupted in 1998, again in 2011, and again in 2015. Since then, it's been inflating, rising by over a meter like a balloon slowly filling with magma. Sensors show increasing tremors. Seismicity is climbing. Some scientists say it could erupt again soon. Here's where it gets even more fascinating and more terrifying. Axial is connected to the same tectonic system driving Cascadia. When magma moves beneath it, it shifts stresses in the surrounding crust. Could that affect nearby faults? Could an eruption, while maybe not directly triggering a megathrust, set off smaller ruptures that cascade into something bigger? We don't know. But researchers are watching it like hawks. Meanwhile, back on land, we're beginning to understand the full scope of what happens after a big rupture. When the fault slips, the western edge of the continent drops, by as much as six feet. In seconds, entire coastal towns like Seaside, Newport, and Coos Bay could find themselves suddenly lower than sea level. Ground that was safe becomes submerged. Salt water floods into wells, into fields, into homes. Roads buckle. Bridges crack. Infrastructure designed for the 20th century fails in the 21st. And then comes the tsunami. Unlike tsunamis triggered far away, a Cascadia tsunami would strike in minutes. Not hours. Minutes. For many, there won't be time to drive. Some will have 10 to 15 minutes, at best, to reach high ground. And here's the kicker. Climate change is making it worse. As sea levels rise, the area that could be inundated by a future tsunami isn't just increasing. It's multiplying. By 2100, scientists estimate the tsunami flood zone could be three times larger than what models predicted just a decade ago. Entire evacuation plans, based on outdated maps, are now being reevaluated. That's why scientists are in a race against time. Using new GPS sensors, underwater observatories, and seismic networks, researchers are monitoring every twitch, every slip, every odd signal from deep below. In some cases, they're catching slow slip events, movements of the plates that happen over weeks or months instead of seconds. These events may act as precursors or as stress relievers. Again, no clear answers yet. But the system is active, alive, changing, and so is our response. Across the Pacific Northwest, communities are waking up. Emergency drills are becoming routine. Tsunami evacuation towers are being built. Schools are teaching preparedness alongside math and science. Indigenous knowledge, once dismissed, is now central to understanding what this land remembers. Geologists have identified at least 19 major quakes in the past 10,000 years. That's roughly one every 500 years. The last one was 324 years ago. You do the math. The truth is, we're not just overdue. We're on the cusp. And the question now isn't if, but how prepared will we be when the shaking starts? This story isn't meant to scare you. It's meant to inform, to engage. To show that beneath the beauty of Oregon's coastline lies an ancient, ongoing struggle between creation and destruction. A battle written in stone, water, and time. It's a story that's still unfolding. Each new scan of the ocean floor reveals hidden fault lines. Each tremor brings new clues. Each burst of gas from a hydrothermal vent. Each microquake under axial. Each subtle shift in GPS data. All part of a complex, 
restless system beneath our feet. And the more we understand, the more resilient we become. Because knowledge isn't just power, it's survival. So, which part of this living, breathing story pulls you in the most? Is it the ancient seismic cycles? The volcano rising beneath the sea? Or the brave communities adapting to the unknown? Whatever it is, don't turn away. The ocean isn't silent. The land isn't still. Cascadia is whispering its secrets. And we're finally learning to listen. So stay curious, stay alert, and stay with us as we continue uncovering what lies beneath. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and let's explore this restless world together before it moves again. Because one day, it will.